Thank you for tuning in for another physics lesson with Mr. M. Uh, today we are going to be covering another um, conservation of momentum type problem. This will be uh, another elastic collision type problem uh, where two objects will come together and then they will bounce off of each other after the collision. Um, so keep in mind um, when we do these conservation of momentum problems, uh, the main concept here is that the total uh, initial momentum is equal to the total final momentum of the collision. And so the way that we go about um, showing this mathematically looks something uh, like this. Our total initial momentum is equal to our total final momentum where this lowercase p is the symbol for momentum. And we know that our equation for momentum looks something s like this. p is equal to m times v which is our mass times velocity. So where we need to start, and one of the things that I always teach my physics students, is that we need to read the problem carefully and pick out all of the proper uh, information. So let's go ahead and take a look at our um, problem for today. Um, here we have an 80 kilogram running back, running eastward at 1.5 meters per second, uh, before getting tackled by a 95 kilogram linebacker traveling at 2 meters per second westward. Both players bounce off each other after the collision. If the linebacker continues moving in the same direction at 0 0.5 meters per second, what is the velocity and direction of the running back? Um, so here we have two objects. We have the running back and the linebacker. And we want to kind of separate the information for both. Okay, so we know that our running back is 80 kilograms, um, running, traveling eastward at 1.5 initially, so before getting tackled. And if we go all the way down to the end of the problem, we know that we want to find the velocity and direction of that running back. Uh, on the other hand, we do have our linebacker, who is 95 kilograms. The linebacker initially is traveling at 2 meters per second westward. After the collision, that linebacker is moving at 0 0.5 meters per second in the same direction that it was traveling at. So it's continuing to move westward. All right. So that is all of our relevant information from the problem. Uh, now what we have to do is we have to set up our problem. And here's the most difficult part of the whole solving of these conservation momentum problems is, is um, setting up our problem. So initially we have two objects, uh, and afterwards we also have two objects. So we need to know the mass and velocity of each of those objects before and during. So initially we're going to need to know the mass and velocity of the running back and then we're going to also need to know the mass and velocity of the linebacker. That's going to have to equal the mass and velocity of the running back afterwards along with the mass and velocity of the linebacker afterwards as well. Okay, um, This is an M Okay, I apologize, that looks pretty bad. Okay, another thing that I like to do is I like to kind of split my problem down the middle and try to try to treat it as two separate two separate problems because um, they're gonna be equal to each other. So this just makes it a little bit easier to kind of separate the information. Okay, and once again, um, here we have our running back and our running back before and after and then we have our linebacker before and after as well. So this kind of correlates to the information that we picked out in our problem. Now one of the tricky things about um, these elastic uh, collision problems or really any conservation momentum problem is the addition of the direction. We need to actually set a positive and a negative value for our directions. Okay, and so because my initial um, value here is eastward at 1.5, I'm just going to go ahead and, and assign 
that eastward direction as a positive value. Okay, so eastward is going to get positive values for the velocity, but if we're traveling westward, because that's in the opposite direction, that's going to get a negative value for all of the velocities as well. This is really important um, key to setting up your problem um, appropriately. Now these are just arbitrary. We could have also made the eastern direction negative and the western positive. We could have flipped those. It's okay to do that. All right, But it's always good to, to kind of give yourself, uh, uh, kind of write this down so that you can kind of reference it when you're plugging in your values. Um, and when you get your final answer, because we're going to need to know the direction of the running back. If our final answer comes out to be negative, I know he was traveling westward. But if our final velocity comes out to be positive, then I know that he was traveling eastward. Okay, so that's why we set this up the way that we have. All right, so let's go ahead and plug in our values. The, the mass of our running back was 80 kilograms. And he was initially traveling at 1.5 meters per second. I can leave that as positive. The mass of my linebacker is 95 kilograms. But because the linebacker was traveling westward, I need to have a negative 2.0 meters per second here. This is key. A lot of students get mixed up. Um, they f either forget to put the negative here or um, they're just really confused on where the negative or the positive goes. Remember, that only pertains to the direction that of the velocity. Okay. So that's all our initial information. So let's go ahead and plug in our final information. The mass of our running back does not change. So we can still have 80 kilograms here. We do not know the velocity, so we're just going to leave that as a V. The mass of our linebacker does not change either, still 95 kilograms, and the velocity here comes out to be negative 0.5 meters per second because he's traveling in the same direction as he was initially, and we know that it was 0.5 meters per second. Okay, so now all we have to do at this point is crunch the numbers. All right, our 80 times 1.5 that comes out to be 120 um, newton seconds is our value um, our unit for momentum we're going to add that to 95 times negative 2 which gives us negative 190 newton seconds that's going to equal 80 times v plus 95 times negative 0 0.5 gives us negative 47.5 newton seconds okay so come back over here 120 plus negative 190 gives us negative 70 newton seconds and over here i have 80 v minus 47.5 newton seconds to get this V all by itself, we're going to have to add 47.5 on both sides. So we're going to get on this side negative 22.5 Newton seconds is going to equal 80 times V. To get V all by itself, we're going to divide by 80 on both sides. And when we go ahead and do this calculation, our answer V is going to equal negative 0 0.28 meters per second. The fact that this is a negative value means that our runner is traveling in the westward direction, which kind of makes sense um, because the linebacker has a little bit more mass, was traveling a little bit faster, so when they when that larger um, person tackles the the smaller person, we kind of expect that that smaller person is going to travel in the same direction as the linebacker, 
which is what we see here. Okay, so our velocity ends up being negative 0.28 meters per second. Hopefully this video was helpful for you and hopefully it helps you solve your own problem at home. Thanks for tuning in.